This video is meant to demonstrate the installation of MySQL and MySQL Workbench on a Windows platform. So you'll notice that I am on the dev.mysql.com slash downloads area. This is for the community version of these tools. So on Windows, I'm going to go ahead and click MySQL's installer for Windows. Uh, it comes up, it gives me my choices. I'm going to choose the first one up here. Uh, it asks me if I want to do all of this. No, I just want to start the download. What do I do? I want to do with it when it's done? I want to run it. It does uh, the typical Windows security scan. And then it comes up and says, do you want to make these changes? The answer is yes. Now, when you get to this, rather than choosing the developer default, let's come down to custom. And this allows us to choose exactly which products we want. OK, so we'll then choose next. Uh, the first thing we want is the server. And then we're going to choose the most recent one. There we go. All right. Once that is selected, then we'll go to the applications. We want the workbench. And again, we want the most recent one. And that's done. And then even though we may not need this, it's probably not a good idea or probably is a good idea to get this. Uh, if you're going to be using MySQL for any kind of web development, typically you're going to want the ODBC driver and you would select it. So those are the three items that we want. All right. And then you're going to click next. Now, <clears throat> at this stage, I have already downloaded the C++ drivers. But what you might get is a status here that says you're missing those drivers. If you are, go ahead and just click execute. It will then come up and ask you if you want to download and install those drivers. The answer is yes. It will go ahead and finish the download. It will change the installation. And at that point, you will get the screen that says ready to download and you would then go ahead and click execute. And as you can see, it begins the download process for each one of these tools. And once they are all downloaded, then of course the installation process will begin. And so we're we're waiting for all of this to finish up and I will probably edit the video so that you don't have to sit here and watch this. All right. So at this point, you'll notice that everything is complete. We choose next and then uh, we're ready to configure the server again. Next, um, we want it to be standalone. All right. So we're not going to choose the cluster approach. We'll say next. Um, this is going to be a development computer, which means this is where we're doing our testing and we're running it for purposes. We're not going to use this as an actual server that other people would connect to. So just leave this one alone. The default port is 3306. And again, we're not going to change that. And then these, of course, allows Windows to open the port so that we can make use of that. We're not going to change anything else. We'll go ahead and say next. Um, then on Windows, you can choose either of these. It really doesn't matter, uh, but you do want to protect your server. OK, so we choose next. Now, at this point, the username is root, and then you have to come up with some sort of a password. Um, whatever you do, make sure that you remember what this password is. And so one of the things that I'm going to do here is I am going to open Notepad and I'm going to go ahead and type my password. Now I'm going to save this. All right. And so I'm just going to put this on the desktop for this moment. And this is going to be my MySQL password. Password. Holy cow, I can't type. Password. There we go. And I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to type this password in here. Now, again, I want this to be something that I can remember. Uh, it has to be a combination of upper and lowercase characters, numbers, and a symbol. All right. So I'm just going to say uh, M Y three Q L um, P at S S word. 
All right, so that is more than the eight characters. It has all of the requirements. Again, I am going to save this document so that I don't lose it. And then at this point, I'll go ahead and copy the password, drop back over here and paste and paste. All right. Notice it says, hey, that's a good strong password. That's exactly what we want. We're not going to add any additional accounts to this. So we say next. And then at this point, it says, OK, once I've got this done, do you want me to start it up? And we'll go ahead and say yes. All right. So we'll say next and then execute. And at this point, it begins the final configuration. And then once this is done, it will actually allow us to start the server. OK, so we click finish. Um, and then next and then finish. And at this point, it should start the server. OK, now notice what it did is it's hopefully started the server and then launched the workbench, which is what the interface is that we will use to interact with the server. Now, how do, can we check to see if the server is running? Um, I am going to go ahead and click on my start button. I'm then going to type the word services. You can't see this, but I have done so. I'm going to hit enter and my services panel now starts. Everything should be uh, laid out alphabetically. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down here till I find the M's. And here it is, MySQL 80. Notice that it says it is running and the startup type is automatic. Now, you can choose to leave this, but what that means is this, this surface is going to be constantly running, uh, consuming um, CPU time and all of that type of stuff. So you can choose to leave this or you can click on it you could stop the service, you could pause the service, you could restart the service, or um, I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, stop for just a second. It will stop it. Then I am going to right click and then I'm going to say properties. And at this point, rather than startup type being automatic, I could change it to manual. And if I change it to manual, Notice it changes this to be manual. That means that when I want to start and use this, I would again go to my services. I would come down. I would find it. I would click on it and then I would click start and watch it start up. And again, notice it now says running. So this puts me in charge. Either of those two are perfectly legitimate options. Just know that if you make it automatically and it's automatically running all of the time, it is consuming some of your system resources. All right, so that is the installation of MySQL on Windows. I hope this has been beneficial to you and it will give you a blueprint to follow as you do the same.